And welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. Well, we got a lot more questions for the good sheriff and not much more time to do it. So we'll, we'll whip through as many of these as we can. Um, I mentioned snowmobiling. Yes, um, it's not been a great snowmobile year because of a lack of snow. Some people are happy. Some people are not so happy. Uh, but you have a, uh, what would you call it, a unit? We have a snowmobile patrol unit. Um, you know, and we, we actually, each year we have a kickoff press conference. Um, this year we did it uh, back in December. Mm -hmm. There was snow on the ground. Uh, for years we've always done it. At, every year since I've been the sheriff, we've done this announcement at the Deerfield Firehouse. Yeah. They've been kind, um, and I always gave the media an opportunity to go for a snowmobile ride. Um, but the past few winters, we've seen less and less snow in early December. So this year we did have snow on the ground. We did our announcement this year, a little, little different location. We went to uh, Penn Mountain Snow yeah. Riders Club up in Remsen. Yeah. And, uh, Again, the media was able to go out on the trails, but shortly after that, that warm-up came, and we lost everything. But obviously now this weekend, uh, snow has returned. Mm -hmm. Hopefully um, it's enough to get the trails up and going here in the next few days. But um, Sheriff's Office, we have four snowmobiles. Um, this county, we have about 650 miles of groomed snowmobile trails, and uh, so um, it's a lot of area to cover. You know, we try to do the best we can. We get to the hot spots, if you, if you want to call them hot spots, um, to deal with the issues. Um, the biggest issues we deal with uh, on our snowmobile patrols, first and foremost, is the respect, the lack of respect sometimes for the land owners. Those 650 miles of trails, more than 500 of them are on private property. The landowners, whether it be homeowners, farmers, um, they are the reason that we have such a, a vast amount of snowmobile trails. So I cannot stress enough to the snowmobile operators, stay on the trails, follow the signs, you know, don't veer off and make a party spot and leave all your debris and your, 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 you know, your party activity debris um, because that just upsets mm -hmm. the landowners. You know, and, and again, uh, that's important. And then uh, the, the loud mufflers, um, these snowmobiles uh, come out of the crates pretty fast nowadays, but people modify the exhaust. It's illegal to do that. Nothing upsets a landowner more than being woken up at two or three in the morning with this winding, whiny, yeah. high-pitched sound. So again, we're out there dealing with that. And then of course, our, tra our, our traditional things, keeping your sleds registered, that's where the snowmobile clubs get their revenue to maintain the trails. They're all volunteers, these, mm -hmm. these snowmobile clubs. Um, they need that revenue. So you gotta be registered. Please follow the speed limit signs. And, and most importantly, don't drink and operate the snowmobiles. I mean, unfortunately, I think nearly every year since I've been the sheriff, we've had a fatal um, of some kind snowmobile accident. And it's always, it's either speed or it's alcohol. Um, you know, so we're, we're out teaching snowmobile safety classes every weekend. Um, and like I said, when weather permitting, we've got four snowmobiles, team, two teams of two out on the trails enforcing the, the laws. The uh, uh, sheriff's office uh, just got a new uh, dog, yes? Yes, uh, we welcomed Bo to our, our um, um, canine unit. Bo is uh, a, a new initiative for us. Bo is, a, is specifically a drug dog, specifically assigned to the correctional facility. Um, Bo is a German short-haired pointer. Um, one of the one of the uh, more um, in tune dogs when it comes to drugs. Um, even though our inmate population is lower than it's been in decades, the inmates we do have are more challenging than ever. When I say we, I'm talking about all jails. Um, contraband comes in through visitation. Contraband comes in through mail. Um, so the contraband obviously makes its way, you know, creatively in, in some other ways with inmates. Um, but Bo is there. Bo is, is working every day in the jail, five days a week with his, with his handler. Bo is in visitation, checking visitors as they're coming to the jail. There's a big sign coming into the building telling you there's now a drug dog on premise. Um, Bo is actually there when mail is opened. Uh, Bo is, he's, he's a beautiful dog. He's, he's gorgeous. And, mm -hmm. uh, and he's a, a great compliment to the rest of our canines in the, at the sheriff's office. And uh, Bo's already had a couple good grabs since mm -hmm. he's been there. Uh, is there contact in the visitation area at the jail? There is. New York State is one of the only states left in the country where it is mandated where, uh, when uh, upon uh, a visit or departure from a visit, um, kisses and kisses on the lips are, are, are mandated to occur if the visitor wants that. So we're finding that that's the one area where contraband enters the facility. A visitor will sometimes pass drugs via a kiss to the inmate mm -hmm. and 
later on the inmate retrieves it from the, from the bathroom inside their cell and lo and behold contraband is, is brought into the facility. What's the uh, procedure when somebody comes, a visitor comes into the jail? They have to go through a metal detector? Visitor comes in, they register and prior to going into the visitation they do go through a metal detector um, and they wait and then they have their visit. Uh, they're visiting over a counter um, so they're allowed to hold hands and things like that. We have multiple officers working that unit watching for contraband and they do catch it sometimes but not all the time. Um, and it, it uniquely when the, the, the inmate is checked on the way into visitation and the inmate is checked on the way out of visitation so they're searched so if they have something on them um, obviously we know where it came from but the, re the, the visitors are not released from a holding area they're in a secure holding area until the inmate is checked so if the inmates checked coming in they have mm -hmm. nothing but when they're checked after visitation they have something we've got the suspect being held in the, in, the, in the tank so there have been times where a visitor comes to visit and they don't leave. They become an inmate themselves. Um, yeah, it's a good way of putting it. They come in, but they don't leave. Right. Um, you're uh, done as uh, New York State uh, Association of Sheriff's Association president. Yes, yes my presidency term ends um, actually in a couple days. Um, just uh, I'll be heading to Albany this week, um, and I will be passing the gavel to uh, to Sheriff Jeff Murphy from Washington County. He's the uh, president-elect for our association. Um, I had one heck of a busy year with uh, yeah. marijuana legalization, the proposal to legalize marijuana, bail reform, uh, green light legislation. There's been so much, but I think, uh, unfortunately, Sheriff Murphy's going to have a pretty busy year, too. Yeah. Uh, green light uh, legislation and uh, marijuana were two topics that we didn't get a chance to talk about because we didn't mm -hmm. have enough time. But we've got a new feature on uh, the show, and that is if you want to go to cnyhomepage.com, Right after the show, we'll continue the conversation with Nida County Sheriff Rob Mayshall, and we'll, uh, you've been kind enough to say you'll stick around Absolutely. for that. Absolutely. And so we'll have a continuing conversation. CNYHomePage.com right after this. See you next time, everybody. <laughs>